the power of God. You cannot walk away the same way. You cannot walk away the same way. Once the Holy Spirit has touched you, you cannot be the same again. If you're the same again, something is not right. There are a lot of people say, oh, the Holy Spirit touched me. I came for the retreat last year. I fell down and I was crying so much and the tears was flowing down. My snout was coming down. The Holy Spirit touched me. But you're still back to the square one again. If before you gossip, you're still gossiping. If before you drink alcohol, you're still drinking alcohol. I heard a story once about a guy who was an alcoholic. He came for a retreat, okay? I don't tell you where, okay? Not, definitely not the retreat center here, okay? But he came in for a retreat. And during the retreat, the Holy Spirit apparently touched him. So he fell down and he was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. He was an alcoholic, remember that? So he was sobbing and sobbing. Then he got up and then he said, the Holy Spirit has touched me. He's going to give up that bottle, bottle problem, you know? So he decided, decided he's going to go back home and tell his wife. So he went back home and he told his wife, you know, darling, I went for this retreat and it was an amazing retreat. The Holy Spirit touched me and changed me and no more alcohol. I fell down and I was crying and tears was flowing down. No more alcohol. And he said, the wife said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She said, follow me. So he, he took the wife. He went to the cupboard. In the cupboard, there was Johnny Walker, Jimmy Walker, Donnie Walker, all the walkers, you know. He picked up all the walkers and then he went to the backyard. He took a shovel. You know it's a shovel? Yes? Shovel? You know? He took a shovel and he started to dig a hole. And he buried all the bottles and he made a grave out of it. He took two sticks and he put a cross and he stuck it there. And he said, darling, from today, all my bottle habits are dead and gone. And the wife said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. After the first day, he became thirsty. Second day, he became even more thirsty. Middle of the third night, suddenly the wife got up. She checked. The husband was not next to her in the bed. She sat up in the bed and she listened. In the stillness of the night, she can hear. Chick -poof, chick -poof, chick -poof. She ran to the backyard and there he was with a shovel, digging again the, gray, the bottles. And she said, darling, what happened? You said the Holy Spirit touched you. You are changed. Now are you going back to the bottle again? She, he said, yes, darling, the Holy Spirit touched me. Jesus died and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He went back to square one again. That's what will happen if the encounter with the Holy Spirit does not change your life. So if you were an alcoholic before, it's got to change your life. If you were smoking five packets of cigarette after the touch with the Holy Spirit, you smoke none. Amen? Amen. If you were gossiping before, yeah, 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 after the touch with the Holy Spirit, you are zip, zip. If you lose your temper before, after the touch of the Holy Spirit, you are still cool. Huh? That's the difference of the touch of the Holy Spirit. Men, if before this, before this you go home, your wife starts, yeah, 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 and you blow your temper, pew, you blow your top. Takes you two minutes maximum. You can tahan, you can control. Two minutes before you blow your top. Now after the touch of the Holy Spirit, you go back home, your wife doesn't change. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't change. They will, you, you still go back home? She will still continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this time you're cool. She'll continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are cool. No problem. Five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's throat is dry. And you're cool. After 10 minutes, yeah, 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 yeah. she got no more saliva already. And she's asking you, what happened to you? 10 minutes I'm going on. No reaction from you. Then you can say, praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit touched me and changed me. Now I am more patient. Amen? Amen. That is the difference. And that difference the Spirit of God needs to make in your life. Would you say amen? amen? People need to see the change in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. The love of God must become evident in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Is the love of God evident in your life? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And unfortunately, so many people who I say they've experienced the Holy Spirit are not living the life of the Spirit. 
Why? Because they've not really encountered the power of the Holy Spirit to transform their life. The power of the Holy Spirit will come to change you. We said just now that the Holy Spirit is God. He's a person. You need to meet him. You need to get to know him. The Catechism of the Catholic Church 1697 tells us that he is a gentle guest. Gentle guest. He's a friend who inspires you. He's a friend who guides you. He's closer than your closest friend. He's a friend who will never ever leave you. He's a friend who will be by your side through every storm in your life. Your husband might desert you. Your wife might desert you. Your children will desert you. But not the Holy Spirit. Give him a big hand. Are you excited? You don't look excited. Turn to somebody and say, I am so excited. Even though I don't look like it. Tell somebody. Praise the Lord. Are you excited? Don't you want a friend who will never leave you? Don't you? Don't you want a friend who will give you peace and love and joy and not judge you for who you are? Don't you want the gentle guest who will be always by your side? And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. 